So, hello, Omar. Hello. Uh, I'm, uh, Barry Raphael. Hello, uh, Dr. Raphael. Raphael. I'm an orthodontist okay. in Clifton, New Jersey. I've been practicing for 33 years now. Okay. I uh, first learned of your website just a week or so ago. And uh, I have to tell you that I applaud your effort. Okay. I think um, that not that I'm happy you had to go through what you went through to, you know, come to this realization, but I think that if you can um, help other people better understand what the, the issues are regarding orthodontics and facial growth and all those things that you've been talking about, then I think you will have done your misfortune you know, justice. Thank you. And I, and I really, uh, I, I hope you do. Thank you. Um, I know that uh, 33 years I've been very proud of my profession, mm -hmm. and there are many good things that we've done, but I realize also that there are some <clears throat> issues that we've not really adequately dealt with, and that we need to, um, we need to uh, be able to uh, adapt our techniques to be able to, to deal with uh, well. I, I think perhaps the, the one uh, area of healthcare that is most relevant to this mm -hmm. is um, our, our problem with breathing at night. Okay. And that is that the issue of sleep apnea has alerted us to a major health crisis that's going on. Hmm. And that is, in general, we are a very sleepy society. And uh, there was a, a special by National Geographic not too long ago called Sleepless in America. Right. And um, it, it, that, that is a telling um, development in our nations and our, you know, in modern humans' health, that we are not able to get rest at night because we can't breathe. And the reason you're hearing this from an orthodontist is that we're also learning that one of the risk factors for poor breathing at night is the shape of the face. And the shape of the human face has been changing over the past three, four hundred years, maybe a little more, to the extent that our breathing space, our windpipe, you know, behind the nose, behind the mouth, and so forth, is not developing as fully as it used to. Hmm. Now, this goes along with the idea that, with the fact that we're also having a lot more crooked teeth than we used to. And, um, the two of them are linked. Okay. Interestingly enough. What's the thing that has that's changed over the past four hundred years? We know it's not genetics. So what else what what is it that's that's correct. changed? That's that's correct, it's not genetics. And even though orthodontists have been used to saying that we get our crooked teeth from our parents, and we certainly look like our parents, right? Hmm. Um we um we know that our genetics has not changed appreciably over the past 200 some thousand years um, and uh, but but a couple things have especially in the past four or five hundred years and that's our things that are in our environment the foods we eat the way we eat them mm -hmm. the air we breathe and how we breathe it mm -hmm. um, the things we do and how we do them Including the way we sit, stand, sleep, walk, exercise, or not, uh, all these things have had uh, have taken a toll on our health and well-being. They've manifested in really a whole range of chronic, non-communicable diseases, right? Like diabetes and obesity and osteoporosis and um, uh, cardiovascular disease and uh, generalized inflammation, all these things uh, that are that are happening to us, these are almost all the result of things that we do. Okay. And crooked teeth happen to be just another one of those chronic diseases of lifestyle. 
Um, Dr. Raphael, you had a slide you wanted to talk about where you were comparing prehistoric or a 400-year-old or jaw versus a modern jaw. Do yeah. you want me to... I'll put the slide in presentation at this point. Okay, sure. Yeah. So um, I, I'll pass that one. Uh, I'll pass that slide on to you. Yeah. The um, the the difference between the skulls you see that the, that the anthropologists show us and the ones you see in the museums and the skulls of our kids today that are coming in with crooked teeth, you know, 75, 80% of the time, they're very, very different. Um, in particular, it's the, the upper jaw, the maxilla, is not developing the way that it should. Um, and um, in my mind right now, the reason is actually fairly simple. Um, and, uh, and and it, it can be it can be summarized in the in the in the uh, the label of soft soft tissue dysfunction. Hmm. Soft tissue dysfunction simply means the the bones uh, of our skull and especially the upper jaw bone takes yeah. its shape because of all the things that are happening around it, the muscles that put, push and pull on it. The uh, way we breathe, the way we, um, the way we talk and chew and swallow and so forth, in particular the way we are at rest, has been shown to be a critical component of facial growth. The one thing that we see in the modern world pretty frequently, and it was described by uh, John Mew, even in the early '80s, was that many people walk around or sleep with their mouth slightly open, the lips apart, and the tongue um, hanging down, say resting on the floor of the mouth, rather than resting up on the roof of the mouth. Now, that's pretty critical because the tongue is basically the scaffold around which the upper jaw takes its shape, at least the part that holds the teeth and the roof of the mouth. Mm -hmm. um, just like um, our eye sockets take their shape from the eyeballs, and not the other way around. <clears throat> and our skull takes its shape from our brain, mm -hmm. and not the other way around. Our upper jaw takes the shape largely from the tongue, which should be resting in contact up on the roof of the mouth at all times, especially when sleeping, and and you know a good portion of the day okay. when we're not eating or talking. Okay. Way. A few quick questions just for the parents. Oh sure. Um. Um. Could you tell them what to do about eating and how they should eat in order to um, create proper development of the jaws in kids? Well, yes. So, um, rectifying the soft tissue dysfunctions, changing the things that we do in order to get a better outcome mm -hmm. for facial growth, those, there are really a bunch of things, okay. and they do include eating and breathing and posture and all that. And what, what we can recommend really depends on when we see the problem. Okay. So now we're starting to put together the pieces, connect the dots back from sleep apnea all the way back to, um, to really birth and probably even before that, um, you know, near, near, um, prenatal development, um, we're, we're starting to connect the dots to see that a lot of the things that happen to us do affect the way our faces grow. You know, we always assume that our children look like us and that their faces look the way they're supposed to look. But I don't really think that's true. Mm. I think that the face human face even as as uh, as um, as much of an identity as we put into it our face can change with different behaviors at different ages so for infants um, uh, good uh, breastfeeding for instance which exercises the tongue and the muscles of the of the mouth in a way that bottle feeding does not can be very helpful um, release of the little string of skin under the tongue that might bind the tongue down can be incredibly helpful. 
when a child is getting a little older, getting them onto food that requires chewing rather than pre, um, pre-mixed, pre-digested, um, you know, baby food is really important. As we get a little bit older, we have to start looking at oral rest posture. What is that? So that's a critical element, and that simply means that at rest, you should, you should have your tongue up on the roof of your mouth. Now also, in order to have that happen, your lips need to be closed. Hmm. And in order for that to happen, you have to be able to breathe through your nose. So just those three things, that's kind of the holy trinity of airway orthodontics now. You have to make sure that the nose works. Anything that clogs it or or blocks it has to be handled. Hmm. Um, uh, Allergies, asthma, frequent ear infections, um, uh, uh, um, um, food allergies, uh, or anything that creates a lot of mucus. Swollen tonsils and adenoids is a tremendous problem in kids. Hmm. Um, You know, as an aside, we now know that snoring, for instance, even in an infant, can have dramatic effects on the the child's mental development. Wow. For um, uh, a child uh, that, uh, that snores at six months old or one year of age, they're going to have a greater chance of having... Hyper, uh, hyperactivity or attention problems by the time they're in first grade. Mm. This is how, you know, critical okay. is. All right, so we have to get the nose clear. Okay. So Secondly, yeah. we have to make sure that their lips are together. And I, I know parents are always asking me, well, how are you going to do that? And I answer them, we can teach kids how to kick a soccer ball, dance, play a piano, do gymnastics, be a cheerleader, be on traveling softball teams, all kinds of really complex things. Why should it be any surprise that we should be able to teach a kid how to keep their lips closed? Okay. And then finally, we have to teach them how to keep their tongue on the roof of the mouth. Hmm. Now, that may take a little bit of training because um, when, when the muscles have not been trained from birth properly, they're in a bad habit. Hmm. So... There are ways of teaching good oral rest posture, and it really is a pretty critical thing to do. Okay. Um, I, I, I can keep going on this uh, Tell me. For, for a long time, but let me just say this one thing. Yeah. That when a child has gotten used to having their lips apart and, and their tongue hanging down, it literally changes the way they process air. That the... Uh, balance between oxygen and carbon dioxide can can change in a way that when you ask a child to close their lips and put their tongue on the roof of the mouth that it becomes uncomfortable even if they can breathe through their nose and so um, a lot of kids have to be retrained in how to breathe okay now that sounds silly because we all think we know how to breathe right if we woke up in the morning then we're breathing but there there's plenty of evidence that that we don't know how to breathe any better than we know how to eat and for instance over breathing which is a common thing with people that breathe with their mouths open is just as harmful as overeating and so we're really retraining quite a number of very basic, simple functions, but they have dramatic effects on the way the face can grow. Hmm. Now, one more thing. If I can't see a child until they're nine or ten, um, then a lot of damage has already been done. And, um, and we need other techniques to help undo some of that damage. And all of your writings about wanting to help the jaws grow bigger and more forward and, and, and a, in a more uh, full manner, I think you're right on target there, Omar. Those um, were my ideas. Right. Yeah. We, 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 want the, we want the face to develop fully and normally so there's plenty of room for the tongue mm-hmm. and plenty of room behind the tongue to breathe. Right. Right? So, and... and you know, I, 
you're right about all those retraction techniques and extraction techniques and headgear. None of those help the jaw grow forward. Now, I'm not going to say that those techniques caused the problem. The problem was already there. Otherwise, orthodontists wouldn't have pulled these techniques at, you know, it wouldn't have, wouldn't have used these techniques on the, on, on the case, on cases like this. Um, but the, so the, the techniques, they, they don't, they don't cause the problem, but they ignore the problem hmm. and they can lock the problem in place hmm. to the extent that you can never recover from them. Actually, one of your former guests, um, uh, Bill Hang is, is teaching us how to recover from these situations by reopening the extraction spaces. And many times you need to replace the teeth that were missing, but um, it, 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 it improves, at least for an adult, the ability to breathe well, to put the tongue up on the palate, and, and so forth. So uh, that's a long-winded answer. It really depends on when we see the kids and what we can do. Okay, so just to keep the, the, the file size small, I'll, I'll press pause and then I'll, I'll restart. And then I was thinking I could ask you a few questions about techniques and history. Sure. Okay, so I'll hit pause for a second.